Hello, everyone, and welcome to MIC TV. Um, today, we're going to be discussing a signature sales story, building your brand through stories. Um, if you don't know it, I'm Greg Ferriola, your host, along with my partner, TJ Peterson. Uh, we are business-based artist development experts. And essentially what we do is we work with independent artists that are working to become musicians, um, and we help them develop, launch, and scale their music careers. Um, and we primarily do that through our online program um, called the DIY Musician Success Blueprint. But we also do some one-on-one -on -one coaching and help them out on, on a continual basis. So if you're ever interested in learning more, please let us know. Um, and if it's your first time joining us, um, we'd like to welcome you to the MIC community. Um, we love having you here and meeting new musicians. Um, so if you have a moment, please just say hi in the chat. Um, even if you're just watching the replay, just drop it in there. We like looking everybody up, following you on you know your social channels. Tell us about a little bit about yourself. You know anything you basically want us to know. Um, all right. So again, today we're going to be discussing a signature sales story, building your brand through stories. Um, now, in our last um, episode, which I believe was a couple weeks back, we explained the difference between music marketing and music promotion. During that show, essentially what we did was we explained the difference between music marketing um, and music promotion. And what that is, is that music promotion conveys what you're selling and music marketing conveys why you're selling. Um, and if you want fans to support your releases and shows, um, then you need, then they are going to need to become emotionally invested in the things that you do on a regular basis as a musician. And that really only happens um, through marketing. Although most musicians will focus on promotion and just telling people what they're doing in the sense of like, hey guys, my next single's coming out, or hey, my show's coming up this week. You know, if people aren't already emotionally invested in you by the time you say that, they're not gonna respond, which is why so many artists have a problem getting people to show up for their shows or streaming their songs or you know, buying their albums. Um, now, when you go through the process of marketing, obviously, if you're in musicians, most of you guys aren't gonna have a degree or background in advertising and marketing, um, but you don't need to. Um, the way that you are gonna go about doing this is through the act of storytelling. Um, and any human being on the face of the planet knows how to tell or is capable of telling a story. Um, and as a musician, what we always kind of talk about with our artists and explain to them when we're working with them is that there needs to be a story behind everything that you do. Um, a story behind your social media posts, um, your music releases, um, your next live show or tour, a story when pitching your songs to playlists, um, a story when you know approaching industry contacts uh, like booking agents or music supervisors, a story when targeting sponsors, pitching to blogs, a story for your next crowdfunding campaign or your next merch project, and the list just goes on. So anytime that you're doing anything, you really want to affix a story to it so that you have the opportunity to tap in emotionally with your audience so that it resonates with them and that you get the response that you want. Um, because in today's industry, people really just don't buy music anymore. What they're buying is your brand. And essentially what that is, is your story. Um, now, if you want to become a full-time musician, what this means is it'll be your ability as a storyteller that will determine whether or not um, you're going to be successful in your career. Because an effective storyteller determines whether you're going to be able to create the emotional connection that you need with your audience that will constantly hold their attention and encourages them to financially support your music career. Um, so now the question is, how do you effectively communicate why people should care about you and your music? Um, and that's done through something that we have created called your signature sales story. Now, for most artists and bands, creating music comes completely natural. Um, but selling music typically isn't quite so natural. Um, you know, personally, when I kind of got involved in the industry, I hate it selling. And I do not consider myself to be a salesperson. Um, yet throughout the course of my time working in the music industry, I have successfully sold a lot of things. So how does someone that hates selling actually go through the process of selling things? Well, what I personally discovered was that I'm good at selling things I love and that I'm passionate about. Why? Because when you love something, you don't actually have to sell it. You just need to explain to someone um, why you love that thing and then let them decide for themselves if they agree with the reasons that you list. Um, and, you know, when we talk to musicians that hate social media, the number one reason that they hate it for is because they don't really know what to say to their audience or fans or, or what to talk about. You know, maybe they don't find, think maybe what they're talking about is personally interesting or maybe they're embarrassed about it. There's a million things like when you're finally you know, the focus point of attention online that you can really kind of feel um, intimidated and, and not feel so comfortable sharing things. But once we explain that all they're 
really doing is conveying the things behind their career that matters most to them um, and presenting those things through personal stories, then suddenly they have plenty of things you know, that they can actually write about in their social media posts. Um, because again, at the end of the day, you know, if you are a songwriter, in my opinion, that's the hardest thing to write. You have to write something that sounds good and then it you know, has great lyrics and all these other things. Um, so if you have to just kind of write a little bit of a story behind your social media post or an event that you're creating, that is completely within your skill set. Um, and you know, when we sat down, TJ and I, you know, for MIC and our other um, you know, label, and we had a marketing consultant kind of sit and explain to us the process of marketing in more detailed terms, um, it really kind of resonated a bit more when she approached it and explained it from a storytelling atmosphere. Now, before that, you know, TJ and I had just recently taken over our social media campaigns. Um, and I had sat down to try to write our social media posts and I couldn't really come up with much. It really just wasn't my things. I, as a human being, I'm not really into social media. I like in-person contact and personal relationships, but I really don't talk too much online. I'll follow people. I'll like some stuff and things of that nature, but I'm not really a social media communicator. Um, but after she kind of went through and broke it down in detail about how it's just, you know, talking about the things that matter to you and putting that into some sort of a story that people can resonate, then it was actually, in my opinion, it became really easy. And I sat down and I wrote, you know, the, our full year of social media posts within a couple of days. Um, and it came really easy because, you know, TJ and I sat down and we discussed the things that really mattered to us and the things that we wanted to highlight to our potential clients into the music community. And then we just focused in on how we want to present that to them. And then it was really easy just to kind of let that flow out. Um, okay, so now with all that in mind, um, let's get back to today's topic, which is a signature sales story. And I'm gonna go over a presentation um, that will help you and provide a deeper look into the, the process. Um, so here we go. And I'm gonna take a sip of water before we start. That way I don't start choking on my dry mouth. Okay, so what is a signature sales story and why is it important? Well, a signature sales story is simply a narrative that communicates your brand to your audience by highlighting specific emotional hooks that you feel are gonna resonate with your fans. You know, just like a song has a musical hook, your signature sales story has an emotional hook that will directly relate to a theme that you want to highlight from the values and beliefs that you are most passionate about. And its purpose is to simply make you relatable so that you can form a connection with your audience and turn potential fans into actual fans. And then over time, when that bond becomes strong enough with them, someone that is an actual fan of you and your music will eventually become a financial supporter when presented with the right product or event. Now, in the sales world, that transformation is known as the buyer's journey. And it's essential to the success of your music career because it not only builds a lasting relationship between you and your fans, but it also keeps them engaged with your career and produces repeat customers. And that's what you want. You want you know, people that are going to come back to you over and over and over again to stream your music, to buy your songs, to buy your albums or your merchandise. Um, and that doesn't come in any other way than having an emotional connection with them. Um, so now we are going to discuss briefly the buyer's journey, but we're not going to go over in super duper detail because we had a whole session or, or live stream on this, you know, several weeks back. Um, so again, you can look at that and find that in our guide section. Um, but here is the quick overview of what the buyer's journey is. Um, so in this picture here, this represents the buyer's journey, which for musicians is a process where someone is transformed from a follower, like a casual follower, just kind of liking your post into a fan. And then from being a fan that likes, likes you and what you do, actually dipping into their, their pockets and paying you money on a consistent basis. Um, and in, this picture also represents the emotional journey that your fans go through um, as they travel through your customer funnel. And your customer funnel is how you attract, engage, and monetize your audience. Um, now, as you can see in this diagram, the buyer's journey covers the progression from the moment someone discovers your music all the way through to where they actually become a financial supporter. But what makes people go through and progress from each of these stages, from unawareness to awareness and interest and so on, um, is emotion. Um, and it's your signature sales story that is going to convey that. So you can have your entire infrastructure set up online um, and maybe even have you know little links that connect everything. But if you don't have emotional cues in there that 
you know, convince people to move from one stage to another, it's just not going to function the way that you want. You're not going to get the response that you need. This is why people have, you know, little clips at the end of their YouTube videos that, you know, put what they're doing into context and asking them to subscribe or, Hey guys, go to my website and do this. Or, Hey guys, this is what's going on in my life right now. I would really love it if you signed up to follow my crowdfunding campaign, you know? So at the end of the day, you, it's not just about putting yourself up online and even connecting everything together. You have to kind of add these little emotional hooks and cues um, that encourage people to do certain things on your behalf. Um, and that's really what, you know, not only the buyer's journey and your customer funnel is about, but including your signature sales story in that process to get the response that you need. Um, now, the story behind your career um, will have, you know, hopefully a significant impact on your fans to the point, again, where they're going to have an impact. Um, so when you're going through and crafting your signature sales story, it's an important process because it is going to be what gets your audience to respond. So the question that we're going to ask now is how do you create a signature sales story? Um, now, the first step in creating a signature sales story is to create your brand. Now, everyone's familiar with a, what a brand is, I'm sure, um, but we like to think of a musician's brand as a detailed description of how you want to portray yourself as an artist to your fans. Now, this covers music related items like why you want to be a musician, your genre and your goals and your definition of reaching, of reaching success. But it also covers personal things in your life, you know, about um, you know, things like your interests, beliefs and experiences and think, even things like your values and your characteristics. Um, what this means is that to create your brand and your public image, you're going to need to sit down um, when you're starting out your career or at any point in time in your career and do some self-examination. Take a good long look at yourself, your life, your past experiences, um, and you want to choose the personal and musical themes that you want to use to attract and connect with fans. Um, now, if you were one of our members, we have exercises that help you with this. Um, but we're going to go over right now some of the brief steps. Um, obviously, this won't be as in-depth as what we do online, um, but to kind of help you like maybe connect the dots a little bit more with what we do, um, I always, and TJ, I always like to describe it as building a friendship. Um, so if you are making friends with people, which I'm sure everyone has at least one or two friends in their lives, you're, you're going to have some friends out there that you have maybe one or two things in common with, um, or maybe just like doing certain specific activities with. Um, and then you're also going to have some friends that you just connect with and you share everything with, like your best friends in the whole world. Well, you know, when, with your fans, you're going to kind of have the same thing. You're going to have your diehard fans that are like your best friends in the world that know everything about you, that follow you all the time, that you have a lot of things in common with. And then you're going to have other ones that maybe just like your music or love your live shows. Um, the thing here is, is just you want to make sure that, you know, you are taking out the things that you might have in common with your fans and highlighting them in all your messaging from your bio all the way through to your social media posts. So when someone stumbles across your music or your online channels, um, they have the opportunity to kind of see the things that really matter to you. And if those things and items resonate with them, you're gonna have more of a chance um, for them to follow you, listen to your music and keep them engaged with your career. Um, now, when it comes to creating your brand, the first step in doing this is going to be to describe your personal background to your audience. So, you know, we would kind of have this be kind of an internal creative writing process when you would go through it with us. Um, but the basic things that we would have you start doing is you want to start by writing down some of the things um, about like how you grew up and things about your family. Um, if you were in a band or are currently in a band with someone, you want to describe each band member, um, your relationship between one another, how maybe how you guys met. Um, and then write down the things that also interest you and that you're passionate about. Um, what experiences have you had in your life or that have defined you as a person? Um, what things do you believe in or what do you stand for? Um, what is your personality like and what are the characteristics that make up who you are? Um, so, for example, if you suffered from childhood depression, um, lost your parent at a young age, served in the military, or maybe even grew up poor, these are all things that you might have in common with other people, and you'd want to consider including them in your overall brand and in your messaging. So we've seen people that have, you know, interest in animal rights um, or mental health or whatever, and they include them because they're really, really super passionate about that, and it just comes natural to them to talk about it because it's a cause that matters to them. And if that same cause matters to your audience, you're going to have that much more of a chance to kind of build a deeper connection with them. 
Now, once you kind of outline the personal sides of the things that you want to share with your audience, the next thing you want to do is describe your music background. You want to specify who you are and your background from a completely music perspective. You know, why do you love music and want to be a full time musician? Um, who are some of your musical influences and what type of music do you specifically play? Um, what experiences are you trying to provide to your fans um, when they listen to your music or attend your shows? Um, how are you unique or what stands out about you as an artist? Meaning like, what is your niche? Now, you know, a lot of people out there are familiar with like that it's important to have a niche, but when they think about having a niche, they really look at it as how can I be different from other people? And when you kind of put it in that terminology, it's difficult because, you know, every, everything's been done. So really kind of being different from people isn't the easiest thing in the world to do, but don't think of it your niche is being different. Think about it as how you will stand out from other people. Um, to kind of clarify what that means, we give the example of you know Johnny Cash. If you're familiar with who Johnny Cash is, um, he was known as the man in black because he wore black um, and all the things that he was, he was doing. Now, wearing black isn't something that's different from people. Lots of people wear black, but it's what stood out about him and what resonated with fans. Um, and that's what you're trying to do when you're developing that kind of niche. Like what stands out about you or what do you want to stand out about you as an artist and person. Um, also, when describing your music background, remember, it's important to be just be genuine and passionate. Um, so always add emotion when you're talking about the details and don't just say, hey, I play rock and roll. You know, talk about it from an emotional perspective. Um, all right, so the next step here in, de in developing your brand is that you want to define your dream. You know, what are your long-term goals as an artist? Um, explain what success means to you and why your goals matter and why they excite you for. Um, what are the main obstacles that may be standing your way from reaching your goals? And why do you need support from your audience? Um, describe why you're an artist worth following and share any maybe awards or honors or accomplishments that you had. Now, the purpose behind this here is, is when someone follows you online, there's a million artists out there. You know, so do you think people are going to want to follow someone that, you know, hasn't made a post in three years or hasn't released music in a while? No, they want to know that you are really passionate about this, the reasons behind why you're passionate, the reasons why their support matters for and why you're asking them to kind of become on this journey and to know that you're serious about going on this journey and what those goals are. Um, they want to know that because if they decide to invest their time into supporting your career, that it's going somewhere. And, you know, these people are going on a journey with you. Whereas if you, you know, are kind of a one-off artist and, and, you know, hey, I've released my album just to see what happens and you're never going to do it again. Well, why would anyone want to kind of, you know, kind of sign on for that? It's like signing on for a TV show that's only lasts a season. Like that's not what you want. You want something that's going to kind of go on so you can kind of go on that entire journey with that person or those characters. Um, all right. So once you're done and you have to find your dream, the next thing that you want to do is define your brand identity. Now this, when it comes to branding is what most people think and identify with being a brand because your brand identity is essentially the visual aspects of your brand, such as your color scheme, font, and the clothing, and maybe even your logo. Um, but it also includes other components like your arts and band name and the tone you use when speaking to your audience. So when people think brand, this is what they think. They don't really connected us, but just all this emotional side when you're, you're developing a brand, but the emotion in our opinion is obviously the most important, um, but you can't neglect your brand identity and the way that you visually represent yourself, because that's the first thing that people see and are going to connect with before they dive deeper to learn more about who you are. Um, so when designing the visual aspects of your brand identity, your goal is try to express yourself um, without words. For example, if you're a gothic band that writes dark, depressing music, then you're not going to be necessarily selecting pink as your primary color. You're going to be using black or some other dark color tones. Um, and you know, you want to think that out when you are, again, creating your brand and how you want to portray yourself to your fans. Now, once you have completed all those steps, the next thing that we highly recommend doing and the most crucial part of this process is to get feedback from your fans and people that know you. Um, your brand image, because your brand image um, is how others see you. Now, this is important because how you see yourself isn't necessarily the way that other people see you. So you want to get input from family members, friends, fans, anyone that kind of really knows you and has been following you for a while to get input to find out if what you have created, you know, matches the way that they also see you. Um, so take your current version of your brand after you've assembled it and you want to start getting feedback. Now, once you've gotten all this feedback from all these different people, then you, you sit back and decide, you know, what you 
what kind of feedback and what ideas and thoughts they have that you want to incorporate. Will you agree with everything they say or maybe want to represent things that they, they, they tell you? No, you might not pick them all, but you want to at least take that into account and try to improve upon your um, brand so that it's more in line with the way they see you. And what this is called is brand alignment. So again, you're going to go through this continually out throughout your career, uh, because as you evolve as an artist, people will also view you differently. And you can see this in some really major artists like Madonna and whatnot. They're rebranding themselves continually throughout the course of their career. And the really great artists are, are like experts at that because you're, they're changing with the times they're changing with the tone of the country or their fan base. And they're making themselves in line and making and keeping themselves relevant with what's actually going on. And this is something that you, and a process that you're going to do over and over and over again. So it's really important that you understand how to do this. Um, be true to yourself, be true to your fans, and make sure that you're 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 you know creating a brand that will resonate and be relevant in you know the area of music that you're going to be doing your performances and stuff in. All right. So now let's discuss creating your signature sales story using your brand. All right, so the first step in creating your signature sales story is to simply choose the main themes behind your brand um, that you're gonna use as your emotional hooks. Now, in this example here, we say, you know, TJ and I will say, pick three to five core themes that define your brand that you feel will resonate with your audience. Now, can it be more than that? Absolutely, absolutely. But like in the beginning, just start off by selecting a few um, and testing those out to see what resonates with people and what doesn't. Um, you can have 20 if you want to, but it's really better to be a little bit focused um, in certain areas so that you are you know, really learning how to properly convey those different themes um, effectively to your audience. Um, so things that you might wanna consider, or, you know, are you a liberal or conservative? Um, are you coming from a blue co you know, color background or are you more high class? Is your band all about having fun or is it more serious? Um, are you an inspiring person or, um, or is your attitude more pessimistic? Are you theatrical, more reserved? Um, are you open about things like your sexuality or are you, there are specific social causes that you want to support and so on. So you're gonna go through all these different ideas and decide what it is that you want to include. And the things that you should include should be things that you're really, again, passionate about and that make you happy. Um, then once you do that, you wanna pick um, one thing musically that you're most passionate about. Is it performing live, recording, songwriting, or maybe you're all about mastering your instrument. Whatever those things are, you wanna choose the one that you love most. Now, again, you might love all those things, but just choose one to focus on because you wanna, again, pinpoint and, and target um, people with that. Because, you know, again, if you, if you say you love all these different things, you can't really try to market yourself to everyone. And by picking one thing, what you're doing, at least to start, is focusing on one small demographic that you're trying to connect with. And then once you do that and have done that effectively, if you do wanna eventually add in more things, that's fine. But early on, just try to pinpoint and try to reach that one audience member. All right, so the next thing here is you may, um, you want to include is what things are you best at? You know, is it singing, performing, or writing? Um, now, it can also be something personal, such as helping people or knowing how to throw an amazing party or an amazing show. Um, but you want to kind of also pick up something that you're best at to, you know, use to kind of connect with your audience. And finally, what is your number one form of income um, or your what we call your main revenue stream? Um, will it be live shows, merchandise, Patreon? Um, and the reason why that is for is because again, at the end of the day, it's your signature sales story, not just your signature story. So the purpose of doing this is not only to build a connection with your audience, but to use that connection to make sales. So every so often you will be sprinkling in an occasional offer, whether that be a ticket for a live show or a piece of merchandise or a crowdfunding campaign. Um, but every artist is going to have that main revenue stream, meaning the thing that they're most passionate about. Um, now, again, that might be live shows, um, but that doesn't mean just because you're doing live shows that you're not also going to be dabbling in merchandise and other things. But you want to just focus in that one area that, that you enjoy the most and really put all your messaging into that. Um, now, if this process is still unclear, don't worry about it. Um, and, you know, this is you know something that again we've kind of created to help clarify you know things that have been going on in the music industry for a long time, um, and make it you know a little bit more simplified and concise so you can do this for yourself and not just kind of 
throwing darts at the dartboard, hoping that you might hit something that works for you. Um, but you know, if it's again, if it's still unclear, you can kind of think of it like almost like an online dating profile. So like if I was doing this, you know, I'd be like, hi, my name is Greg. I'm a New York singer, songwriter. I'm liberal blue collar guy that believes in supporting musicians and helping um, people. And I'm always a glass half full. I mean, you know, and then I would take that and kind of make that, you know, resonate in like different social media posts, but that's where you were trying to start from. Um, and you're capable of doing this because you, you need to be able to, you know, make it simply, you know, you simplify the process for people getting to know you so that if someone stumbles on you and they look at your, your profile for a few minutes, they can kind of grasp very quickly who you are, what you're about, and whether it's they want to take the time to delve deeper into who you are and following your career. All right. So now once you do that and have the main brand themes, the next thing that we would have our and have our clients do is we have them write a theme backstory. And now you're not going to take this story and post it online for everyone to read, but the reason why we do this for it's like a critical thinking, like almost like a journaling exercise. You want to remember why these things matter to you. Um, when I did this for MIC, I started thinking back to when I was like just starting in the music industry as a musician, working my way up. And like, I remember doing those things, but when you really sit down to think about that process, like you just remember more when you're right, when you're forced to kind of write it down and try to explain it to somebody. So we have our members go through that. Um, and maybe during that process, you do kind of come up with some like cute, cute anecdotes or simple anecdotes that you can kind of use story-wise to explain why you're into something specific or not. But you want to go through that process just to spend some time, again, doing that self-examination and critical thinking. Um, and then once you have gone through that process and have a better idea um, for the reasons behind why these things matter to you, um, you want to sit down and write a mission statement. Again, this is just something internal um, that you have for yourself um, for each theme that you create. And what that does is, is you want to decide how you want to use these themes to impact your audience or maybe unite them using these themes. Um, what experience and feelings do you want your audience maybe to have? Or simply, you know, how do you want this theme to matter to your fans? Um, and you want to be, you know, specific about that because again you're going to take this and try to communicate something to them um so you need to do a little bit of critical thinking for how you want to take these themes and utilize them when building your bond with your audience now the key thing here again is to put yourself in your audience's shoes um, because true fans again don't care about what it is that you're selling they care about why you're selling and if you want to receive their support you need to first decide what you're going to provide that will support their needs. So going back and forth and again, explaining the process to them and kind of getting to know them and, and explaining to you know the, the, again, the things that matter to you, all these things will be almost like a feedback loop where you're going through these conversations and you're perfecting it until it clicks and resonates with your audience. And then you wanna use what you've learned to connect with other people. All right, so once you have a clear vision for how you're gonna use your main theme to connect with your fans, your next step is to figure out how you're gonna communicate those themes when interacting with your audience. Now, when communicating your brand themes, um, you're gonna to need to create a series of consistent messaging, um, you know, basically wherever your fans are gonna be online or wherever you're gonna communicate with them, whether that be at live shows or on your online channels. Now, this messaging, you know, should clearly reflect your themes in a way that reinforces the images that you want to portray to your audience um, while keeping them engaged with your day to day activities. Um, because by showing them that you stand behind the causes that you support, you're going to let fans know that you're more than just words. And that's important because if you can show that, then over time, you're going to earn their trust and loyalty. And it'll happen automatically instead of you having to go out and become literally friends with each individual member. That's not practical. I mean, you can do that with your diehard fans, but you want to have the system in place that's passive through your online messaging that allows people to kind of get that journey um, without you having to sit down and talk to everyone individually or have like a one-on-one -on -one with them. Um, however, again, just be careful because when you decide what themes kind of will be behind your brand, you have to kind of live that. You got to be that person. And um, that's why when we kind of talk about with our audiences, our, our, our artists, we said, be true to yourself and really go behind what it is that you do. Now, some artists will create characters to be behind. And if you're going to do that, that's fine too. But then remember that when you're taking pictures and doing things that you have to be representing that brand all the time. Otherwise you might come across as fake. Meaning that if you were all about the environment, you know, you probably shouldn't be taking pictures of driving a gas guzzling Humvee or using, you know, a styrofoam cup because someone that is really into the environment isn't going to do that. 
Um, so just really be mindful that you need to commit to your brand. Um, now, when it comes time to communicate your story to everyone, the first thing we do is recommend researching your influences. Now, your influences are simply going to be artists that you are passionate about that, that, that maybe have influenced your music career. Um, and if they're similar to who you are and sound like similar to your music, then there's a very strong chance that you will also share similar fans. So check them out, see what they're doing, see if the ways that they're communicating their brand to their audience, like what ways might resonate for you and maybe incorporate that. And that includes even things like hashtags. Um, then you basically from there, you are gonna come up with a series of active and passive messaging. Now for active messaging, um, what you wanna do is identify all the key activities that you do on a regular basis that reflect your brand. Um, and then assign each key activity to a brand theme. And on what that means is um, if one of your main themes is that you're a party band, then your key activities may be that you're, you know, going to live shows and having fun or drinking with your bandmates. Um, whereas if you were maybe a singer songwriter and your main thing was being a political band or a political artist, then your key activities might be going to rallies or, you know, writing something about topical political issues. So you want to kind of keep that in mind and show the activities that you're doing um, in your posts and online that will resonate with people. Um, on the flip side for passive messaging, you want to create a list of ways that you're going to communicate your brand um, through written words and phrases or written words, sorry, and pictures. Um, now you want to incorporate your themes when designing, you know, you can incorporate these themes when designing your album covers, creating so show signage, um, choosing your song titles, or even producing merch. Um, for example, if you don't eat meat in one of your Instagram photos, you can simply have a um, word, the word vegan on a shirt, and that would communicate something that you're passionate about. Um, or maybe you can even post a meme or a quote about it. Um, now, if you're familiar with TJ and I, we used to work for a musician producer, Nal Rogers, and he is, you know, and formed the band Chic. Now, Chic is a, a disco band, and he has written songs for that band that are called Good Times, Dance, 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 Everybody that Dance, and He's the Greatest Dancer. So if you read titles like that, what do you think the vibe's going to be at their shows? Yeah, you're going to have a good time and dance. And if you go to one of their shows, that's what it's like. It's a party atmosphere. Um, so you want to be mindful of that when you're kind of, again, crafting out your titles and the imagery and the things that you are creating with um, your merchandising and everything else. It all feeds into the people's way that they perceive you. Um, next thing you want to address here is you want to select the tone or attitude that you're going to use when speaking to your audience. That's important too, because, you know, some people, the artists that we follow are very uplifting. Some of them can be like, hey, I'm having a really crappy day and they just kind of focus on the negative side of their lives. Um, and some people are even like funny. So, you know, decide, are you gonna be uplifting, pessimistic, serious, comical, sarcastic, happy? You know, whatever those tones are, people are gonna tune in for that because again, you know, when I was growing up for me, like I was really into a band, Alice and James and their music was dark and my childhood was, was good, but I also had a lot of problems personally at that period in time. So like I was drawn to dark things because that's kind of how I felt. Now I'm not, at, I, mean, I still love their music, but I'm kind of more into positive uplifting bands um, because that's kind of where my mindset is now. So just be mindful of when you're kind of going through this stuff that the tones that you use that might reflect how you feel will also, again, attract similar people. So that's what you want to be doing. And one of the reasons why selecting these things are important. Um, and again, if you ever get stuck, check out your favorite artists and see what they're doing. All right. And here is the last slide. So the next thing that you need to do when communicating and delivering your signature sales story to your fans is to decide where you are going to message them. Now, what this means is um, when you have your themes, where are you going to put them? Are they going to be in your artist and band bio, on a blog, a newsletter, Patreon post? Um, now, this is important because, you know, the format that you use to create your messaging will vary based on where you're interacting with your audience. Um, also, depending on who your fans are, they're gonna consume information in different ways. And this is important because maybe you love writing blogs, but if your fans don't read blogs, then there's really no point in you doing them no matter how much you love them. Um, you know, whereas if your fans really prefer Instagram all the time, then you're gonna focus a lot of time on taking pictures and, and focusing your, your um, you know, messaging into that medium. So just be mindful of that and kind of, again, talk to your fans and find out where they're at and where they're hanging out and then create your messaging to kind of fit their needs. Um, and last but not least, and we touched upon this earlier, um, every so often you want to add in an offer to your message. 
Um, focus on promoting you know, your main revenue stream first, which is why we have you select it. Um, so if you're a Patreon, um, then you know, focus on you know, talking about maybe you know, some of the stuff that you're, you're releasing through your Patreon page. Um, if you are a, um, you know, all about selling your music, then maybe you're gonna be taking you know, a quote from one of your songs and driving people to your website to where they can read the lyrics, buy the lyrics and download the song. Um, or if you are all about, you know, maybe merchandise as your primary thing, then maybe in all your pictures, you're gonna be wearing different things that you are trying to sell to your audience. Whatever it is, just really think about, um, you know, every so often just kind of dabbling it in it and make it part of the story. Um, there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, my show's coming up this week, but if you can put a, you know, narrative behind that, it'll just come across better and less salesy. And that's what you want. Um, people don't like being sold to. People like being given the opportunity to be part of an experience. So if you say, hey guys, I'm playing a show this week, would love to see you there. You know, you might get some response to that. But if you say, hey guys, this week I'm playing a show and we're doing a special cool trivia night and then we're doing an after party. We'd love to see you there. It's gonna be an awesome time. We're all gonna get together and and uh, do X, Y, and Z. We're, you know, so in that kind of scenario, what you're doing is you're presenting a an experience that might appeal to people for multiple reasons. Sure, they might wanna see you perform, but maybe they also wanna play the trivia night or come to the after show party or whatever's kind of going on. So you wanna make it an experience um, because some people, might just want to come out because they need a night out. But if they're just coming out just to see you play, that might not be enough motivation to get some of your fans out. Close family and friends, maybe, but not maybe everybody. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're doing that. Uh, to kind of round things out here, um, I just kind of hope that that all makes um, the process of marketing and selling things more clear. Um, again, it doesn't have to be this gross sales process all you're really doing is selecting things in your life that you love and that you want to share with your fans. So if you can find and be true to that, then the sales process isn't this gross thing. It's just, hey, this is my music world. These are all the things I love doing. These are all the things my fans love doing. Let's all share in these process together and create you know, events and products and things like that, that that people want because they are passionate about these things. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind you know, when you are doing these types of um, marketing and promotion for your shows and put a lot more thought into it than just saying, hey, this is coming out in two weeks. Please buy this or please, you know, pre-save me. Um, all right. So that's going to be our show for today, guys. I hope this helps. Um, again, message us anytime that you need anything. Um, so everyone have a great day. And remember, we're always here um, to help you if you need it. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in creating a professional brand that's going to help you to transform your casual followers into financial supporters, then I invite you to take our free brand creation program that we call your signature sales story. You can find the link for it in the description below. And please don't forget to subscribe. Your support really matters and helps us a lot. Have a great day.